We welcome you to Augustana, where Lutherans and Anglicans worship together. I would like to acknowledge we gather on Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of many people of the Métis Nation. You are welcome to worship with us. We aim to share the unconditional love of God with people of all ages, abilities, colors, ethnicities, sexual orientation, or gender identities. This is a work in progress, and you are welcome to join us on our way. Good morning. For those of you who don't know me, either here or online, I'm Pat Blakely, and I'm a member of the congregation, as well as church council. And I'd like to start by wishing all the fathers in person or online a very happy Father's Day. On Monday, June 20th, we lift up World Refugee Day, an international day designated by the United Nations to honor refugees around the globe. It is a time to celebrate the strength and courage of people who have been forced to leave their home country due to conflict and persecution. It is a time to build empathy, awareness, and understanding of their plight, and to recognize their resilience in building their lives. You will find other announcements in your bulletin. Uh, also, if you're interested in participating in a lay-led service, please contact Lorene. We're always looking for volunteers. So please stand as you're able to join in our opening hymn, number 665 in the ELW.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And also with you. The hymn of praise on uh, page, uh, on hymn 164. Confessions and forgiveness are written on the inside of the bulletin. Uh, please read along with the part that's in bold type. Gracious and merciful God, let us hear your word of forgiveness yet again that we might be changed day by day into the image of love, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We confess that we haven't listened well to Jesus' commands to love you, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. We confess the times we have listened to Jesus' words, but fail to respond to his command to love. We confess our lack of understanding that you indeed know no partiality. We confess our fear of change. We confess our failure to build bridges and work together to challenge racism discrimination and prejudice, and to stand up for our neighbors. We confess our ignorance for which there is no excuse. Forgive us, merciful God. Open our hearts to the challenge of your son's command to love. Open our eyes to see the plight of refugees. Open our ears to hear their cries for help. Open our mouths to speak for those whose voices are not being heard. Open our hands to make a difference in their lives. Forgive us, gracious and merciful God, so that we may love and serve you and our neighbors as you have taught us to do through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God, our creator, you call your people to love as you love without partiality, showing hospitality to the stranger, doing justice, speaking for those whose voices are not being heard, and defending the rights of the poor and needy. Help us to show your love in all that we do and say. May we see the face of your son and the faces of all whom we are called to love and serve. In your mercy, set us free from the chains that bind us and defend us from everything that is evil. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from 1 Kings chapter 19. Ahab told Jezebel that all Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. 
Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid. He got up and fled for his life, and came to Beersheba, where, which belongs to Judah. He left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is now, it is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He got up and ate and drank, and then he went in the strength of the food, went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God, and at that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord the God of hosts, for the Israelites have spoken your covenant, thrown down in your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a sound of sheer ch silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, killed your prophets with the sword, I am alone, am, I, am, I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. Word of life, word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Galatians. A reading from chapter 3. Now before, the, before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until the... Under the unt, now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that... Faith has come, and we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our gospel acclamation ELW song. <laughs>
according to Luke, chapter 8. Glory to you, O God. Then Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, what is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine and the swine herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off and told in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. There is a summer uh, sermon series, uh, ELCIC series, and so I will be reading the one for today. The, uh, it is by Reverend Lyle McKenzie, and it states, My name is Lyle McKenzie. My pronouns are he, him, co-pastor of Lutheran Church of the Cross of Victoria, BC, and assistant to the bishop for worship in the ELCIC and he'll in speaking to Kings 1 and Luke 8. These are wild and wonderful words and stories we hear in the second Sunday after Pentecost. As the church begins a season of learning to love and live as spirit-filled people of the risen and ascended Christ Jesus for the healing of the world. The stories are otherworldly. If you read the Elijah story from 1 Kings in your worship, You'll know Queen Jezebel has promised to have Elijah killed by day's end because Elijah took the lives of her prophets. Elijah's on the run, gives up and asks only to die. Angels minister to Elijah, telling him to eat and drink, to gain strength for the journey, and to be encountered by God. Elijah reluctantly goes, returning to the sacred mountain. But there he repeats the same desperate words that he alone is left and about to die. God does not encounter Elijah in rock-splitting hurricanes, nor in earthquake, nor in a forest fire, but in sheer silence. It's the most common translation now. Although in the past it is included a still, small voice, or translations I saw recently, a quiet whisper, or a faint murmuring as God passes by. In sheer silence, a whisper, a murmur, God speaks and says simply, go. Go on, Elijah. Do what I am calling you to do. Wild and wonderful encounters by God are what we trust the Spirit is doing on any given Sunday in worship, 
so that we remember God does so, any, does so anywhere, anytime. We may be on the run, feeling threatened, leaving for a haven, wondering if we are going to die, but ministered to by angels, encouraged to eat and drink at this table, to be strengthened for the journey, we are invited to be encountered by God, maybe not in a hurricane or earthquake or fire, but in sheer silence, only a whisper, a faint murmur, telling us, go, go on, do what I am calling you to do. Tomorrow, June 20, is World Refugee Day. Many church communities across the ELCIC, often with neighboring partners in CLWR or other agencies, have been involved or are involved in sponsoring refugees. The total number of refugees and displaced persons growing each day, especially since the invasion of Ukraine, is a staggering 85 plus million. Over 35 plus million are children. The number of people in need is overwhelming, but there are many, many stories of people coming to this land sponsored by ELCIC church communities. Stories of lives changed forever, of families reunited, of new friendships formed, of safety, security, education, opportunity. Not with it, without significant challenges and more we need to do to welcome new people to these lands and address the prejudices and racism that are present and impact newcomers and those for whom this has been their home for generations and for time immemorial. Together, these acts of love and hope change lives, all our lives and the communities in which we live for good, for God's good purpose. Go, do what God is calling us, calling you to do for the sake of refugees and the communities of which we are part, that all would have a safe home as God desires. That's the wild and wonderful story of the man from a city of the uh, Gerasenes who meets Jesus as Jesus and the disciples land in the country. We heard his wild circumstances, living in caves, unclothed and unable to be bound, out of his right mind. The Bible's way of describing his con condition is possession by demons, legion in number and name. It is interesting to note that there was a Roma, Roman legion of soldiers stationed in the land of the Gerasenes, making us wonder if the man's possession reflects the possession of these lands and all the people by a legion of Roman occupiers. Similarly, tormented day and night with attempts to bind and chain them that ultimately fail. And the tormentors know who Jesus is. In a wild encounter with Jesus, the legion of demons plea for their lives, asking to go into a herd of pigs. Animals unclean to the Jewish community, are they there to feed the occupiers? Jesus gives them permission and they run the pigs off the cliff to drown. Those charged with caring for the pigs are understandably shocked and worried, as are others in the community who hear and go out to see the wild things that have been happening and find the formerly de demon-possessed man sitting with Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And what we can imagine are but quiet words Jesus tells him, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And he does so throughout the whole city, telling others how much Jesus has done for him. Tuesday is Indigenous Peoples Day on these lands. And just over two weeks ago was the anniversary of recovering the remains of 215 children on the grounds of the former Kamloops Residential Institution. And more and more children's remains are being located elsewhere across these lands. The process of truth and reconciliation continues with the attempted genocide uh, with recognition that there is still much of the truth being uncovered about the attempted genocide of the indigenous people of these lands. 
And that reconciliation, a complicated word that can be difficult, even maddening for some indigenous people, wondering when was there a relationship between First Peoples and the colonizers of these lands to which anyone wishes to return? And when does truth lead to concrete actions of justice and redress and effective changes for the healing and well-being of indigenous peoples and right relationships between indigenous and non-indigenous peoples with and in care of these lands? At the BC Synod Study Conference in May, retired Anglican Indigenous Bishop Barbara Andrews from the Territory of the People was our presenter. She spoke to us about the pathways to reconciliation as a spiritual journey that includes truth-telling over cultures of lies and silence, healing of memories that include coming to terms with the past, removing its poison, mourning and finding a different, non-toxic narrative. Pathways to forgiveness, including power passing to the victim and the survivor choosing the direction for the future. And pursuit of justice, including restorative justice, systemic change, and redress. Through sharing and storytelling in all of this, Bishop Barber repeated, it is about relationships, relationships, relationships. And she spoke also about those who are reconcilers in our communities. Those who are able to draw people together toward God's true healing. I wonder about the image of the person sitting beside Jesus and in their right mind. Is this an image for us, indigenous and non-indigenous people? whole and restored to land and community together? Jesus says to them, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. Go, go on, do what God is calling us, calling you to do for truth and reconciliation together. Maybe the wildest words today are those of Paul to the Galatians and to Christian communities ever since. Paul writes, In Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. Wild, wonderful words. All of us, beyond every difference and division, are one in Christ. The ELCIC has had three task force meetings since the National Convention in 2019 on racism, homophobia, biphobia and transphobia, and ableism. Each has reported to the National Church Council making recommendations on how the ELCIC can address systemic and structural issues of exclusion of minority persons and take action towards greater inclusion and justice and right relationships together as one people in Christ. The work has been difficult with great thanks to all involved and the recommendations will be challenging and require openness, honesty, acceptness, and willingness to give our best efforts towards the vision of the church that Paul articulates for us. And realizing this vision is only possible not by law and punishment, but by love and accountability and grace through faith in Christ. I imagine even as we gather this morning and listen that in a whisper, a murmur, or in the sheer silence that God, Jesus, the Spirit is calling us now, calling us now to go Go on, do what God is calling us, calling you to do, in grace through faith in Christ Jesus, in the Spirit's wild and wonderful moving toward welcome and inclusion, and healing and wholeness, and truth and reconciliation, and homecoming all together. Go, let it be so in all our relations. Amen.
Uh, please now stand as you're able for the hymn of the day, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness, number 843. Now do the Apostles' Creed. It's on page 105 or the inside cover of your book. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please greet each other with a sign of peace. Let us join hearts and voices together in prayer. Each short prayer will end with the words, God of grace, and you can make the prayer your own by responding, hear our prayer. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. Holy God, you hear the cries of those who seek you. Equip your church with evangelists who reveal the continuous call of your outstretched hands and your promises of a home in you, God of grace. Hear our prayer. 
You hear the cries of the earth. Restore places where land, air, and waterways have been harmed. Guide us to develop and implement sources of energy and food production that do not destroy the earth. God of grace, you hear the cries of those who are marginalized or cast out. Guide us continually toward the end of oppression in all its forms, especially white supremacy. We pray for healing and reconciliation between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples, especially this Tuesday, the National Indigenous Day of Prayer. Bring true freedom and human flourishing to all your beloved children. God of grace. You hear the cries of those who suffer. Come to the aid of all who are homeless, naked, hungry, and sick. Bring peace to any experiencing mental illness that they, may can, they can clearly recognize your loving presence. Comfort the grieving and accompany all who struggle in body, mind, or spirit, especially those whom we name before you today. Doris, Marlene, Evelyn S. and Evelyn K., Jim, Kevin, Earl, Audrey, Orville, Carol, Bruce, Gloria, Marcus, Brody, Karen, Anthony, Darren, Marilyn, Brian, Robert, Linda, Gail, Lisa, Danielle, Shelby, Deanna, Minnie, Karen, Inger, Anne Jane, Mildred, Carrie, Brendan, Nori, Doug, the Iqbal, Iqbal and uh, Alamid Wahid families, and all those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. You hear the cries of those who celebrate and those who grieve on this Father's Day. Nurture mutual love and tender care in all relationships. Comfort those for whom this day brings sadness or longing. God of grace, we pray for the world, all refugees seeking safety and peace, the work of the Canadian Lutheran World Relief, resettlement teams and sponsoring communities, and our own needs. Move us to follow your commands, Lord God, and welcome the stranger. Care for those who have come with nothing but the clothes on their backs and heartaches and memories, and be neighbor to all your children. God of grace. We give thanks for the faithful departed whose lives proclaimed all you had done for them. At the last, unite us with them as we make our home in you, God of grace, God of every time and place, in Jesus' name. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name, and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. May be faithful people who do, who do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Out of our faith, may we be warm-hearted and loving. Out of our abundance, may we be generous. Out of our humanity, may we be bearers of justice and peace in our world. And may God, our Creator, bless us with steadfast love and mercy. Christ Jesus, show us how to love with compassion and the Holy Spirit work in us and accompany us always. Amen. Please uh, remain standing for the sending song, which is Oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing, number 886. Into the world now, love as we have been loved. Thanks be to God.
D major. Postnude in D major. You know, I'm thinking of a really scintillating title. 